It's usually most difficult to, act, to explain to adults how we can use our mind in a beneficial way, free, carefree, you know, enjoyment and freedom in every moment. That's where usually the adults, they go into the, how much do you charge and, you know, all the cynicism and sarcasm that is based on such a beautiful proposition that all of us are innately, naturally, free, naturally beneficial, you know, that's common sense, right? Like we all know it inherently, we all know it deeply. But over the years, and myself included, we trained ourselves in the four mainstays of um, oppression or the four mainstays of confusion. And what are these? These are ways and tools, means to use our mind in a way that is totally um, uh, depressing. <laughs> For most of us, depressing, I'm, I'm so, maybe it sounds a bit extreme, but not to know our fundamental nature as open intelligence, it's very sad because then we can't access our capacity to be of great benefit, our capacity to, to enjoy freedom in immediacy of perception, regardless of what the perception is. Many of us have been trained that we need to really try hard to have only positive thoughts and emotions, positive data streams. And if we don't have them, we are a failure. I remember walking or waking up in the morning and immediately assessing what's my situation so of my thoughts, emotions and sensations. Are they correct? Are they fine according to the books that are next to my uh, bed? Or what's going on? And I wanted to find meaning and purpose and and before balance view it was mainly confusion around that topic how can i understand what's going on in my mind all the data streams so we are trained by a practice that is so short moments i'm speaking about the short moments of um, reification of giving an independent nature to our data streams short moments of avoiding indulging or replacing our data streams and that leads to confusion the result is confusion by the repetition of doing so we are confused about the nature of our mind we are confused about our capacity as human beings and then we have training the training that is available everywhere no matter which form you take of people emphasizing that we are victims of our data streams and we need to do something about them because if we won't do anything about them we'll go mental we'll go to jail our fundamental flow will be all over the place and everyone will hate us so that's one option of the training that we can choose to participate in and we have also trainers people who are role modeling this example of of how to use our mind in a limited way and the community of people, which is at the moment most, uh, most of human society, where people are, we are not aware of the nature of our mind unless we receive a clear introduction to it, like we heard before. So these are tools, anything that we want to learn in life, we have four mainstays. Learning a language, the same, we have a practice. Short moments of Espanol, short moments of Ivrit, short moments of Svanska, short, you know, you do all of that. Uh, and then we have trainers, the, the trainers of the language and training all the media that is available. Enrique Iglesias songs are my favorite for <laughs> learning Spanish. <laughs> and it's a bit of normalizing happening here. And, um, <laughs> And a community of people, you know, the community of people who like to learn Spanish or speak already Spanish. And that's where I gain my confidence in the language. And hopefully at one point <laughs> I will gain assurance in it as well. Open intelligence practice is so much, uh, it's so simple because it's innate. It's nothing that we need to gain from the outside. It's not like a, a knowledge that is out there and an individual trying to grab this knowledge and bring it back to him. Uh, or to her. It's knowledge that is commonly available because this is how we were meant to live. Our intelligence is vast and open, like clear blue sky. And when we stop thinking for a moment, we see what remains. There's a sense of alertness and cognizance, the ability to know remains. And this ability to know is always on. It's never shut off. So once we are introduced to it, we are very lucky. 
and very fortunate because there's no way to turn it off. Even if you sit there and think this is a bunch of BS, um, it's always on. What allows you to think that this is, this is BS, it's open intelligence. So congratulations, you're introduced. <laughs> and, uh, and I feel completely fine whether you think it's BS or not. And, um, and then we have the ability to come back to it in short moments, repeated many times, just igniting, you know, tickling, and instinctively recognizing this open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times, whenever we naturally remember to do so. Before meeting this training, so I had an idea of what, you know, all kinds of things, let's not call it a name, but the nature of mind is, or, and I tried really long, contrived moments to get into this state and hold on to it and never lose it again, never lose it again. And I always lost it because what I was trying to hold on to was like trying to hold into space, a good description about myself. Take a selfie with space, you know, like, right. But gone, gone in an instant. Where the focus is on the descriptions, the data streams, there's always like being on a hamster wheel. And we think we are really getting there. Maybe we're losing some calories along the way, but nothing is happening. And when we stop for a moment and relax and recognize this vast intelligence that is, again, like clear blue sky, um, we are intimately connected to our nature as, as brilliant human beings. All of us are completely brilliant. That's why it's so sad to see what is going on everywhere in the world today because we know, wow, we are so good, we, are, we have such capacity. We just need the, the right understanding of how to use all of this beneficial potency, not to war and, and get into more conflicts and belief systems and assumptions clashing with each other, against each other, but to see how we can simply, by a sh small shift in the way we use our mind, use all of this beneficial potency for the benefit of all. And one of the really cool things about this training that it's not about gaining uh, positive states or getting rid of the negative data streams that we had. And for me, it was really like I, I felt the first moment I took a, sh a short moment with extreme anger and affliction I was really afraid because I was like, whoa, 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 no way, like, doesn't make any sense. What do you mean, allow it to be as it is? Doesn't make any sense. Let's think about it a bit more, you know? I tried to avoid the natural flow of my data streams because I was afraid of the result. I was afraid of what will happen if I will allow my anger to be as it is and won't indulge it by using psychological mind tricks. I was about to say something else. Um, and, uh, or avoiding it, replacing it with something else, like something a bit more spicy and nice, like compassion or, and uh, yeah, all of these tools. Or allowing it to be as it is, suddenly there is the bright light of open intelligence, which is our own intelligence. It, we recognize that it's inseparable from the data streams. So anger is inseparable from open intelligence. Don't try to think about it because that's when the smoke will start to come. We have a great fire team here. We deal with fire every year. Um, but the fire, the beneficial potency of open intelligence, when we allow it to be as it is, there is just great power that is available. Freed up, you know, freed up to be used for the benefit of all. So for me, it was like, recognizing the inseparability for the first time and it's like the color blue and the sky they cannot be separated so there's nothing nothing whatsoever to do about our thoughts emotions and sensations nothing allowing them to be as they are we we gain greater discernment and that was one of another fear that i had okay i will allow it to be as it is what what does it mean will i will not do anything Will I be passive? Everyone will just, you know, punch me in the face and I will be, I'm, thank you, I'm just taking a short moment. <laughs> you know, I really, I had these thoughts and it's a recurring question for many new people because we think how. But then looking at the example of Candice, the founder of Balance View and all the brilliant community friends that are here and everywhere online, you can see many shares. 
we see, wow, it's really not about being passive. I mean, my days are comprised of, yesterday I calculated almost 18 hours of, of service for the benefit of all. Tireless service and dedication, and I'm not saying, saying it to show off, but it's just the way it is. Because all of these 18 hours that before were wasted on trying to fix myself, suddenly, whoa, <laughs> cool, I have time. I actually have time and it's not just focused here, it's focused on what will serve best. And this is the natural disposition of everyone. And this is what's ignited in short moments of open intelligence. Nothing to hold on to. Don't try to reach a conclusion right now about anything whatsoever. Short moment of open intelligence. Brilliant, alert, potent, and then you have another opportunity to take it. The repetition of short moments uh, shows us that at one point we see that the instinctive recognition of open intelligence is obvious at all times. We just get used to it, like the language I sh shared before. Short moments, at one point you're like, ah, you know, you speak and you don't even think about it. It's instinctive and innate. So this is what we train up here. Participating in the training like this, it's really exciting because each day we have no idea what will come up, which questions. I'm sharing as a trainer, we come here to the stage, you don't know how many newcomers will come and what will be their opinions and their questions. But regardless, the, one of the gifts and the results of open intelligence is spontaneous responsiveness. Knowing with great confidence how to respond to each time, place and circumstance so the benefit of all will be accessible and obvious to all. And that's the dedication and passion behind Balanced View, behind and everywhere in Balanced View. Just how we can be of benefit to all, to the greatest number of people. It's a fresh language. We rely, you can say, on the purest of ancient traditions that are always, you know, with great respect and dedication, but the language is updated to 2016. How with our minds, with our culture, you know, it's very different the way we live now uh, to the way we lived 10,000 years ago. So the language of the, of the purest of all teachings need to be adapted. So I can understand it, so you can understand it, and we carry on for the benefit of all. And we are not stuck in in the confusion of emphasizing our data streams. As simple as that. And with young children, what works there is really not like taking them, I don't know, there are some parents here. I'm an uncle of five beautiful nieces, very fiery and, you know, <laughs> very strong. And I tried all kinds of things, you know. And, and, but what I see works best, and that's what I heard also from the parents is, direct example. My example of restful potency, the ability to be clear, loving regardless of, you know, <laughs> wanting them to press the mute button. And I'm speaking, I'm, I'm with them two, <laughs> two weeks a year, but I have great respect to parents who can, wow, well, you know, there's no mute button. Uh, and, um, and just being there and knowing exactly how to respond to the situation. Your example of this self-leadership is inspiring to everyone you meet, whether they are children or not. Children tend to pick it up more quickly because there's less cluttering of points of view and belief systems along the way. So, and if there is openness, you can always share it in a beautiful way that will be, you know, sharing how perfect they are how capable they are, how they are not limited. I shared with my niece when she was eight, you know, whether you have bad, she said when she has nightmares, um, ask what you do when you have nightmares. And I'm very expert in nightmares. Uh, and she said, I, I close my eyes and I think about something else, something else, something else. And I said, I said, that's sweet, that's one option. And you, can I tell you a secret? She was like, yeah. <laughs> said, you know, next time when you wake up from a nightmare, whether it's a big whale coming to, you know, close to you or a monster, um, just allow it to be as it is. You know, and I did the Indian kind of <laughs> wink and I said, let me know how it goes. And after a couple of, I think even a year or so, I asked how it's going. 
yeah, I allow it to be as it is. And she was very proud. So we can also try it, right? She was eight years old. We are over 20, 30, most of us. It's time to upgrade the operating system of our intelligence. And it's not a project of self. So that's very refreshing. <laughs> It's not another thing that you come dirty and then at the end you, you come clean. You are clean all the while. And th then to recognize it, that's where life starts to be really fun. <laughs>